Tensions between Russia and Sweden are high following the Scandinavian nation's application for NATO membership earlier this year. Russian President Vladimir Putin has warned NATO against beefing up its presence in the region. And these tensions have special significance for the idyllic Swedish island of Gotland, located in the Baltic Sea. Special correspondent Malcolm Brabant reports. This summer, ferries have been full of passengers in vacation mood. During the three-hour voyage from the mainland to Gotland, there were no visible qualms about heading to the island's medieval capital, said to be in Russia's crosshairs. The Russian enclave of Kaliningrad is just over 200 miles away in that direction across the Baltic Sea. Amid a flurry of very threatening rhetoric in June, Russia based medium-range missiles there, which are capable of reaching Sweden. In the event of the war in Ukraine escalating, NATO sources think it's distinctly possible that Gotland could become a front line. In the middle of this glorious summer, it seems unreal to even say that. But Gotland has another face. It's now a garrison. Sweden has been steadily reinforcing its defences, and earlier this summer, NATO wargamed a possible Russian invasion. The island's location makes it a key strategic target. Well, Gotland is situated in the middle of the Baltics. From Gotland, you could uh, easily control both air and sea movements in the south of the Baltic Sea. Colonel Magnus Frickval leads the Gotland Regiment. He insists the Russian threat is not imaginary. Everything is much more real, and we have seen what Russia is prepared to do to the neighboring country. It's precisely because of the Russian threat to vulnerable regions like Gotland that Sweden sought to join NATO, although Turkey's parliament has yet to ratify the deal. Prime Minister Magdalena Andersson. Ending 200 years of military non-alignment is not to be done without careful consideration. But my lodestar as Prime Minister during this process is what course of action is best serving Sweden's security. And I am convinced that this is the right decision. It is clear that um, Sweden and Finland's membership in NATO would boost transatlantic security. It will enable closer Nordic and closer Baltic defense cooperation. And it will strengthen the alliance's presence in the high north. Vladimir Putin treated NATO's expansion with studied indifference. In regard to Finland and Sweden, we don't have problems with Finland and Sweden that unfortunately we have with Ukraine. We have no territorial disputes with them. There's nothing that might concern us in terms of Finland and Sweden becoming NATO members. If they want to, please go ahead. But then he issued a threat. Now, if NATO troops and infrastructure are deployed, we will be compelled to respond in kind and create the same threats for the territories from which threats towards us are created. It's obvious. What, don't they understand that? Everything was going fine between us, but now there will be tensions. There certainly will. This is obvious and inevitable, I repeat, if there is a threat to us. In March this year, Russian planes entered Swedish airspace near Gotland. One Swedish TV channel reported that they were carrying nuclear weapons. The Swedes described the incursion as intimidation. Two Gripen fighters were scrambled. They intercepted the Russians and turned them around. Putin would never invade Gotland. Pierre Skori is Sweden's former ambassador to the United Nations. He's busy in Ukraine having his own Afghanistan again. And uh, if ever Gotland were to be invaded uh, or uh, as a target, it would be in a general war between NATO and Russia. And that is, happily enough, I think, not going to, to happen. Is there a danger of underestimating Russia's power and its military intentions? I think there is always a danger of underestimating uh, the Putin regime, because it is the Putin regime and, and its potential military uh, danger. And I think uh, it will be uh, uh, a huge mistake. Terrorism expert Magnus Ranstorp approves of NATO's vigilance, despite Russia's failures in Ukraine. 
We don't know whether he will use uh, tactical nuclear weapons. We don't know uh, what his next moves will be, whether he will sort of retreat, etc. So we don't know what he's going to do. And that makes it really unpredictable and, and dangerous. Uh, and in that sort of scenario, you cannot afford to do anything else. Anti-NATO activist Steen Sandberg is dismayed that Sweden has abandoned its long tradition of neutrality, which enabled it to help broker peace around the world. The Russians say they never going to fight a new war on their own territory. USA say we never going to fight on uh, American land. Where are we going to fight? Europe. And we are part of Europe. If we are in the NATO, we will be a part of the destruction. But that view is out of step with mainstream Swedish opinion. The latest polls suggest that 60% of the population approves of NATO membership. What's the mood behind the medieval walls of Gotland's main town, Visby? It's just the same. Visby is a happy town, Gotland is a happy island, and I don't feel threatened. I talk to my friends in Gotland and none of us feel threatened. But people on mainland Sweden, they are worried about us. They call us like parents and my students who start this autumn, they all ask questions about if we feel threatened, if we feel worried, and the answer is always no, they don't. I guess I feel safer because of NATO. I never felt uh, scared or anything about this situation. I just, it's stupid men making stupid talk. That's, that's how I see it, so, so I, I, I sleep comfortably at night. It's so lot of things who is scary and uh, you can't uh, take it in. I'm trying to uh, do good things for the world, for me, for my family, for everyone, and uh, that's what I can do. And to vote, of course. Mate Folin is hoping to become Gotland's next mayor in forthcoming elections. She used to be an advocate of neutrality, but now she's not so sure. If it was only up to me, sit this out, stay to what we always have done. We have, we have a long time policy when it comes to security and peace. I also know that I haven't got the full picture, of course, when it comes to the security policy on a national level. And I, in that, also rely very much in those who actually have. Sweden's NATO membership isn't a done deal. Turkey might yet defy its alliance partners and wield a veto. Former UN ambassador, Pierre Scordi. We are changing the dynamics in the Baltics by joining NATO into a more dangerous situation because now it will be, the Baltics will be almost a NATO sea. And of course the Russians will somehow uh, react and uh, we, we should not contribute to that. That's why I'm saying if you want to get rid of guns, you don't join the National Rifle Association. For the time being, though, Gotland remains as delightful as ever. The only invaders are tourists. But for young people, the future is much more precarious than it was for their ancestors. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Malcolm Brabant in Gotland.